It's time for Inside Seminole Basketball with Leonard Hamilton, breaking down game-changing plays, momentum-shifting moves, can miss matchups. The inside scoop on the team and what's next for the Knolls as they look to make another tournament run. ABC 27 presents Inside Seminole Basketball with Leonard Hamilton. Live from Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee. Sponsored by these businesses. All right, here we go on a Monday night, Knowles fans. We are back at it inside Seminole Basketball, live from Glory Days here in Tallahassee, all across the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. And you can watch it live right now, of course, on ABC 27. We got you covered over the next hour here on the program, talking all things Florida State hoops as the uh, FSU men at home this past week. Now, Road Warriors once again, back on the road, headed to Raleigh, North Carolina State on Wednesday in Louisville Saturday afternoon. And a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for the star of our show, as always, Leonard Hamilton, ladies and gentlemen, the head coach with us. Coach, happy Monday. How are you, sir? How are you doing today? Well, I'm never really too happy after a loss, <laughs> sure. regardless of how well you play. Uh, we still look, but we are growing. I think we've uh, shown some improvement in a lot of different areas. Uh, and we kind of fought it there down the stretch, missed the free throw, and to get the ball in bounds correctly. Uh, that's what sometimes what in inexperienced teams do. But but I think I think we're making progress. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we 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 telling ourselves that we're going to be a really tough team <laughs> at some point in time during the during the season, and hopefully it'll be starting this week. Yes, absolutely. We're hitting that uh, that home stretch. If you can believe it, uh, it's sort of uh, in a way the final full month of the regular season here coming up with the month of February beginning in a couple of days at NC State on Wednesday. You, as well as anyone knows, this league, uh, she can give it, she can take it away, she can be cold-hearted uh, at times as well, and uh, it's, it's challenging night in and night out in the ACC, home or away. Well, there's no doubt that uh, this is the best basketball league in America. And every night out, you're challenged in every way. Uh, you can't get too happy when you win a game. You can't feel sorry for yourself uh, when you lose a game. So you just have to bounce back. You know, you got to bounce back and be ready. And, and, and that's what motivates you. And um, we are hopeful that, that the close loss the other night will, will serve as a motivating factor as we go into the North Carolina State game. Yep. And I, and I know, Coach, as we have talked and we've discussed on the show here, you talk more and more about developing winning habits and continuing that consistency and finding that in a sort of consistency day in and day out and practice with, with a young group and uh, leaning on second-year players as your veterans and your experienced guys here throughout the season. Um, how, how has your group continued to learn what it takes day in and day out to develop the winning habits at a high level in this league? I think what has happened in, in the last uh, week or so is that our younger players are starting to become more consistent, which gives uh, – Veterans, two-year veterans, a little m more rest. Yeah. I mean, we Baba played 20 minutes the other night. That's a, that's a big jump from, mm -hmm. uh, from where he was the first game. We got to get Tom House more on the floor. Uh, we think he's about ready to, to, to start being as consistent as Chandler Jackson was the other night, and he's been doing very well the last several games. And I think you see Baba's coming along mm -hmm. better each night. Uh, and we even threw a. <laughs> Uh, a walk on in the other night. I thought they gave us yes. some really some really good minutes. So hopefully that will be a, a that will be a telling sign that we can have more confidence to play uh, our younger guys off the bench to give us more energy down the stretch. Yep, and you're talking about Shola Adebisi, who saw action uh, in both halves on Saturday evening against Clemson. Uh, we'll talk about Shola and, and about your bench. Your bench has been. Just tremendous here over the last uh, last few games or so. But but 35,000 foot view, you flip on the film, I'm sure, afterwards on Saturday night. Your group fought their tails off for a full 40 minutes, didn't get the end result with what you were looking for and hoping for. But but what, what did you like? What did you like about their fight and their energy throughout the game against a good Clemson team? Well, we had some good moments on the defensive end, even though it was a, a close game. Uh, I thought that we were in the gaps. I thought we did a great job defending – the po uh, their post. Mm -hmm. uh, Hall had 28 points on us at their place last year. Yeah. I don't know what, what his numbers were, but I know that we made a conscious effort not to uh, 
give him as many touches as we had in the past game. And, and um, we, they got off to a real good start, uh, shooting the ball from the perimeter. It seemed as though everyone seemed to have <laughs> a great shooting night when they played the Seminoles. But I thought we tightened down when we – we had several spurts where we went on 9-0 uh, runs mm -hmm. against them. And I thought we moved the ball, made the extra pass. We found some ways to, to, to score even though we were behind there for a while. Our kids played with great poise. I, I thought they showed great fight. Now we just got to make sure we play well enough to win the game. Yep. As you mentioned, moving the basketball, making the extra pass. Coach, you had a season high. 13 threes, 13 makes from behind the three-point line uh, in the game over Clemson. Uh, and you got some guys that can get it done for it from you, uh, for you from the outside. Darren Green got it rolling early, but it wasn't just Darren. You had a number of guys get involved shooting the basketball from downtown. Well, I thought we had um, about five, what, four or five different guys made a three-point shot. And that, that is not, that's an area where we have not been consistently mm -hmm. successful in. So hopefully that's – you see that's what, what we're going to become as we move forward. Uh, Caleb's shooting the ball very well in practice. Um, Coach Darren, and you notice early in the game that Matthew missed a couple, but he had enough confidence yeah. that he could come back and hit some when the game was on the line down the stretch. So I think we're getting in a, a meta mental state of mind right now. Yeah, he kept it going. He, uh, he kept letting it fly, that's for sure, and he was a, a big part of uh, the keys to success offensively. Three threes for uh, Matthew Cleveland, four for Caleb Mills, four for Darren Green, Chandler Jackson, and Baba Miller knocked down a triple. So, as you said, five guys got involved there shooting it from behind the three-point line. When we're moving the ball, then wh what happens? You always give the guy credit who makes the shot. But in most cases, it's the guy who gets him the ball in, in the rhythm position. And I think that's what we got the other night. We were in fast break. We were pushing the ball down and looking for our perimeter guys. We Reverse the ball quickly and got some uh, baseline jump shots. So we, we're finding ways to, to create for each other. That's what's been missing. Yep. Well, yeah, fun show for you tonight. Jalen Worley will stop by, ladies and gentlemen. Florida State starting point guard who is one of the best in the ACC assist to turnover ratio. A fun young man to watch on the basketball floor. We'll talk with Coach about his bench. 22 points off the bench on Saturday, outscoring Clemson 22-11. to 11 in that category in the matchup with the top team and the standings in the ACC right now. And a lot of fun on site tonight. We'll have some questions from the crowd here this evening. Our guy Chuck Walsh is back with trivia, giving away some prizes and some tickets as well. And we'll have an autograph session following the, uh, the show tonight here live on site from Glory Days in Tallahassee. As Glory Days Grill is the perfect spot for game day and every day of the week with daily food and drink specials, award-winning burgers, and the best darn wings in town. When it's time to pack the tuck, Glory Days Grill supports the Florida State basketball team. Glory Days, home of inside Seminole basketball. More to come with Coach Hamilton. Just getting started here on a Monday night as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Back Knowles fans, we are live here at Glory Days in Tallahassee inside Seminole Basketball with the head coach, Leonard Hamilton. My name is Jeff Colhane. Great to be here. Excellent crowd once again tonight. We appreciate everybody stopping out and being a part of the show here this evening. We've got trivia during the timeouts and during the breaks. Chuck Walsh doing a great job. And we've got some prizes, some tickets that we will give away uh, throughout the show tonight as well. And make sure if you're uh, coming by, stop down and stay with us after the show tonight. Following the program at 8 p.m., we've got uh, a fun autograph session with Jalen Worley and uh, some stars of Florida State Athletics here with us tonight as well. And that will happen here uh, at 8 p.m. following the program here this evening, courtesy of our friends at Rising Spear. And uh, great, of course, as always, to have with us the head coach, Leonard Hamilton. Time now for What's on Tap, presented by the official craft beer of the Florida State Seminoles, Oyster City Brewing Company. Make sure to check out the tap room on Gain Street. Coach, we uh, hit the road again uh, tomorrow at NC State for a primetime tip on Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern. Kind of walk us through uh, the day tomorrow, what you want to see and how, how you want the schedule to flow with your, uh, with your guys and your group. Well, obviously, we'll are, we are practice a little earlier than we normally do because we're traveling. And um, we'll get in there, and our kids like to go and shoot um, 
when they at the other uh, the, mm-hmm. the arena that we're playing in. But tomorrow night, I think they have a hockey match, so we won't be okay. able, we, we won't be able to get in. Um, and uh, we'll we try to get in early enough to to get off our feet and try to get our, our bodies rested up well mm-hmm. as we approach the game. Um, this is a different type of team uh, that we've been accustomed to seeing in North Carolina State. They have one of the more unique players in the country, uh, Burns. Uh, yeah, DJ he, Burns. He's about they, they lift him at six nine, but he's probably about six 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 seven. <laughs> Maybe about three hundred and fifty. <laughs> really, he, he's a big boy. They list him at two fifty, two eighty. <laughs> I'm not real sure about that, <laughs> but he's very clever, excellent footwork, has great touch around the basket. I think he's shooting over fifty percent from the floor. Yeah. Great passer, big great passer, has a high basketball IQ, and he's he's a guy who they're playing through. They're five men. They have excellent shooters. I think uh, uh, Smith might be leading the league in scoring. Yep. And uh, they have a fast pace. They press you all over the place. And so we have to be prepared to make sure we don't turn the ball over and that we we, we create offense for my defense with some de- deflections and steals. Uh, but this is a, a going to be a – has the makings of a high pace game, mm-hmm. you know, where um, everybody's playing very hard, everyone's defending and – and pushing the ball and trying to score. So I expect an offensive explosion, <laughs> and uh, we just got to make sure our defense is going to slow them down a little bit. Do you like that style, that that type of a, a game? Does it matter at all to you with, with uh, the pace and, and the opponent with the way they play? Well, we've been accustomed to just kind of playing the way we play, play th- play to our strengths and try to stay away from our weaknesses. I mean, we like to, to play 94 feet defense from a defensive standpoint. Uh, we haven't had the stamina to, to play with the kind of energy this year that, that we've been accustomed to. Uh, the quality of our depth uh, was hurting us early in the year, but now our youngsters are coming on, and we can be a little bit more aggressive. And So when we get somebody in foul trouble, it doesn't hurt us as mm-hmm. much because now we we got Bobby that can play all, all four positions out there, and we're going to probably get him a few possessions at the post here coming up um, here soon just to kind of give us a little bit more variety, let him play kind of a, like a five-out offense mm-hmm. where we're not necessarily posting him up. But I think you've seen that once he gets the ball inside, he's pretty clever around the basket. Yeah, absolutely. Bob Miller, 11 points, four rebounds, and the play he made, saving the ball out of bounds and bouncing it to Cameron Corrin. That was a play you can't even teach, Coach. Just great basketball IQ in a great sense where his teammate was going to be on the floor uh, I know we've talked about it before, but you have the excitement around him just getting more and more opportunities to play the game and get better has to has to fire you up and get you excited about his opportunities. Well, well he's more comfortable. You can see it from his body language, uh, how he's cheering his teammates on. And, and the, the guy's only played just a few games. You know, he, he, he shot one air ball from, the, uh, from a three, and the next one he, he didn't hit anything but the net. Right. I mean, <laughs> but that's part of adjusting to this level of basketball. And uh, we just tell him to keep shooting. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, like you said, he is, uh, it's, it's right down the center right now, or he's trying to find that feel off uh, the fingertips with his shot from the outside. You mentioned his versatility, his capability, being able to play uh, nearly all five positions for you out there on the floor. What does that creator allow you to do on the defensive end of the floor when he's out there with uh, how you like to switch and move guys around? Well, his lift is a problem for most people in He's versatile enough. He handles the ball like a 6'2 point guard. And, and you, you're going to see him be more and more consistent with his perimeter shooting. I think he drives to the basket real well. I think we've only uh, seen this, uh, this a little glimpse mm-hmm. of what he's capable of doing. And as, as we learn more about how to play to him and he learns more how to utilize our system to be more productive, I think you're going to see him getting better and better with each game. Yep. You've talked a lot about Chandler Jackson as well. And, you know, here's a young man, Coach, uh, on Saturday, seven points. Uh, again, handles the ball well. Two assists, no turnovers, and 19 more minutes of action. I'll have to double-check my notes with our guy Chuck Wallace, but that means uh, I've got him at three turnovers in his last 161 minutes of game action overall. I mean, this is this is a young man that you can see is growing and growing with confidence every time he touches the basketball. Well, my players would say, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> But no, really, I, I think he's he he now he's more comfortable. 
I thought his defense was good. He moved his feet and contained the dribble, and he was physical going to the basket, drawing a foul, and he shot the ball from the corner there on that three. He hit just like he thought it was supposed to go in. Yeah. No hesitancy at all. So I, I love the progress, the, the progress that he's making. I'm excited about what he can become here down in the future. He's got a physicality about him where – he, he can he can get down, and if a guard wants to be physical with him, you probably feel better about utilizing him against some bigger players if well, need be with how he plays down low. No doubt that he's been holding back a little bit. He hasn't really, really felt comfortable, and, and he's not really sure what it, he's supposed to be doing. You remember, he missed eight yeah. weeks of practice, and he practiced four days, and now he was on the court playing. So a lot of things he's behind in, but I love his attitude. He's getting tougher and uh, – commanding the, mm-hmm. the court a little bit more. So I think you're going to see him just get, continue to keep getting better yeah. along with some of our other young kids. Yeah, broken thumb uh, earlier in the year. Uh, held him out of practice, as Coach talked about right there. Well, the bench, uh, they are getting the job done, helping uh, spell some of the, uh, the the elder statesmen, I guess, on this team, as we would call them, second-year uh, veterans, as Coach uh, refers to them here in this season of Florida State basketball. We're going to talk with Coach Nax about Shola Adebisi, and about his path making his way uh, onto uh, the, uh, the roster and uh, into Coach's uh, program as well. Hey, did you know that FSU Athletics is self-supported, is not funded by tax dollars? Because of this, we rely on fans just like you to join Seminole Booster so your teams have the best possible chance to achieve success on and off the field. Seminole Booster membership starts at $5 per month. It comes with great membership benefits. Go online to SeminoleBoosters.com to learn more or join. That's SeminoleBoosters.com. More to come with Leonard Hamilton live from Glory Days here in Tallahassee as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Ready to. All right, we're rolling along on a Monday night. Welcome back. Glory days here in Tallahassee inside Seminole Basketball with the head coach, Leonard Hamilton, as his Florida State basketball team back on the road this week, two more away from home from the friendly confines of the Tucker Center. We're at NC State on Wednesday night. It's at 9 p.m. Eastern tip at PNC Arena and then head to Louisville on Saturday afternoon for a 2 p.m. Eastern tip at the KFC Yum Center in Louisville, Kentucky. Coach uh, Shola Adebisi, he, he comes in on Saturday, and here's a guy that just confident, like he, like he has been out there 20, 25 times before, and gives your guys uh, uh, some juice, some life, some spark. How proud of you uh, were you of him uh, going in there and uh, doing what you needed him to do on Saturday? Well, I've been wanting to use him for a long time, because, not because of anything other than he earned, he's earned it. He's an extremely hard guy to defend in all our practices, and he's he's on our famous green team. Yep. But he has he has something unique about him, you know. He has that junkyard dog mentality that we always talking about on the defensive end. He never stops. He's one of our better athletes. Mm-hmm. He's quick. He's fast. He's extremely smart. But he plays so hard. I just felt that that was a great place to use him in in that game. Uh, we need to have some quickness and speed, trying to defend those guys inside. But if you if you if you noticed, well, when that ball was shot, he 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 was out of place, but he went and got that tip in. Yeah. And then he missed the shot, and he went right back up and immediately got the ball, and he, and he finished the play. But he makes those kinds of plays all the time, um, uh, in practice. And I think he's he deserves to play, and we're gonna try to get him more minutes as we move through the rest of the season. You talk to your, your strength and conditioning coach, Mike Bradley. He, he just he's, he glows about his athleticism yes. and, and what is his capability, to your point, of what he can do out there on the floor. Well, he has that package now. He has that unique, special uh, athletic attitude, mm-hmm. that competitive spirit, uh, and he brings it every day, even though he, he had no idea he was going to play in the game the other night. And I just had, a, I just had a, a feeling that if he went in the game, he would give us uh, – uh, he would make a contribution. And, uh, made, made me look good. <laughs> it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty impressive for a guy. You talk about uh, your green team that helps your guys get ready, practice in and practice out. But to just to have that mentality to to hop off the bench and when his number is called, his name is called, when you point at him, that's got to. I mean, that's got to make it feel good for a, for a young man like that. But he's that way all the time. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, you don't have, you don't have to say hustle with him. Yeah, he, and that's his nature. That's his attitude. And I think he, he as he continues to keep growing. I think he's going to be able to help us down the stretch. Yep, that's a, a young man who uh, played with Matthew Cleveland at Cambridge High School uh, in Atlanta before Matt finished out his high school career at Pace Academy and uh, has a tremendous family as well. Uh, you look at his background, brothers, parents, uh, amazing background, unbelievably uh, impressive. Well, we don't want to talk about where his parents went to school. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep that a secret. I, I won't bring that up. I won't, uh, I won't bring that up for I think, you. I think his, his sister went to Duke. She, she might have. Matthews did, I know that. His brothers, uh, one brother went to the School of Medicine at Morehouse College, and the other went to dental school at Columbia. So that gives you, uh, with the, the Adebisi family, that's a, that's a pretty impressive group. No right doubt about that. Nope. They, they are a lot more educated than Coach Ham. I'll tell I got, you that. They, uh, okay. I, got, I got to make sure that he, he, doesn't start, he doesn't start calling plays. <laughs> He, uh, they, they, uh, they, they got it going there, that's for sure. But he was, he was fun to watch, and we look forward to seeing uh, Shola out of BC uh, gain more and more opportunities here into the uh, month of February in ACC play. Talked about NC State uh, a little bit. Uh, they are number one in the league, scoring the basketball, just over 79 points per game. You mentioned their pace. Uh, you mentioned their athleticism overall. Uh, kind of take me uh, behind the scenes with the mindset of what you're looking your group to do, what they need to do defensively uh, on the road to slow this group down on Wednesday night. Well, the first thing we have to do is take care of the ball. They have a, a variety of different types of presses that they, utilize, that, that they use, and it can be very effective. Uh, we, we've been normally pretty good against attacking presses, but in this case um, they, have a, uh, they have a rotation of different ones that sometimes can confuse an inexperienced team. We spent a lot of time on this day. I think we'll handle that real well. But when they get deflections and steals and get out in transition, uh, that gives them that, – that feeds them. Yeah. Uh, in the half court, you know, they, they, they run a lot of – they run a few sets, but, but they are, they're really aggressive, you know, shooting, shooting the three as well as taking the ball to the basket. And now that they're playing through Burns, when everything slows down, he's like a point five for them. Mm-hmm. And he makes great decisions with the ball. It's interesting that when he catches the ball at the three-point line, he backs you down all <laughs> with, the, you know, with, with his big body. He just backs you right on down. So uh, our, our job is to try to keep the ball out of his hands. Yeah, crafty, uh, crafty young man. That is, uh, that is for sure. Talking about Caleb Mills, Matthew Cleveland, Darren Green, they were uh, all here uh, this past week uh, at uh, Glory Day, signing autographs, uh, following the show with us, and all three of those guys stepped up for you in the scoring category uh, on Saturday as well. Uh, talk about Caleb for me uh, a little bit. Double figure scoring now in 12 straight games and was able to, to get it going uh, for you from the outside from behind the three-point line on Saturday. Well, Caleb has made some adjustments on his perimeter shot. Um, his left hand was creating some problems for him. But he worked at it and worked at it, and I think he's extremely confident now. Um, he has a knack for putting the ball in the basket. It's going to make him a little bit more effective because now they have to respect his perimeter shooting. And he, he's primary, the way he's been scoring, is taking the ball to the basket and creating off the bounce. And we'll, we need him to not only shoot well from the perimeter and create for himself, he's capable of creating for his teammates uh, because of his skill set. And so hopefully we'll get a little more of that which will make him, not only him, hard to defend, but yeah. also gives us some higher percentage shots for, for Matthew and, uh, and Green. As his three-point percentage increases, you also have Matthew Cleveland's three-point shot improving and that percentage increasing as well. When that goes on the scatter report for the opposing team with what those two can do off the bounce, mm-hmm. what, what does that do drawing defenders out and how it opens other lanes for you offensively in the half court? Well, I think that will give us – kind of a more offensive weapon, but we got to establish a little bit better inside game. Mm-hmm. Um, Cam has shown flashes of being able to, to do a good job in there, but as freshmen would have it, sometimes they, you know, they're not quite, quite as consistent. Uh, that's why you see us getting the ball inside the, the bobble a little bit more mm-hmm. because he has a, a good skill set and he kind of slippery around the basket and he has those long arms and long legs and he's able to make a move and get all the way to the basket and draw some fouls for us. So uh, we're finding different ways to score uh, now that we more and more familiar with, with the talents that we have. Yep. You ready for uh, questions from the crowd next segment? Of course I am. There we go. All right. We're going to have questions from the crowd out there. 
from uh, a few of you. We'll have those next segment for Coach Hamilton here on the program, live from Glory Days in Tallahassee, having some fun on Monday night as his Florida State basketball team back on the road at NC State and at Louisville here this week. Our show brought to you in part by T-Spark Enterprises. Want a guaranteed win? Call T-Spark for your next roofing or construction project. We conquer all peaks. TSparkConstruction.com. More to come with Coach live from Glory Days as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. We are heading in, rolling into our second half hour here on the program, Inside Seminole Basketball, live from Glory Days in Tallahassee. My name is Jeff Colhane. Always great to be here with the head coach, Leonard Hamilton. Coming up here momentarily, <coughs> Jalen Worley uh, will stop by. How about that nugget from Chuck Walsh during the break? Uh, Jalen's father, Jalen's father, Jason, his godfather, Wilt Chamberlain. That's unbelievable. I'm blown away. I know. I, you, I mean, you know, you knew that. I know, but that's unbelievable. Well, um, I wish the, I had Wilk Tamer on my team. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that, Coach. <laughs> you know, you know, it's amazing what he did in the NBA. I mean, he got it. he did he call, did he average average the triple double one year. I, 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 I if, he, if anybody did, it was Wilt the I mean, still. he averaged 25 rebounds one year. That, that's, that's, I can't imagine a guy getting 25 rebounds every, every game. Yeah, two-time NBA champion, NBA Finals MVP, four-time NBA MVP, 13-time All-Star, also uh, a coach with the Boston Celtics. Uh, or no, excuse me, I'm thinking of Bill Russell, my apologies. But uh, NBA All-Star game MVP, uh, the list goes on. We could do an hour show on Will Chamberlain, uh, coach. So he was, he was a special athlete. He yes. actually ran track. Uh, he ran track and high jumped uh, at Kansas. Yes, he did. That's and, right. But the average t 25 rebounds, that just, that's on a whole other level of athleticism and determination and toughness. Yes. The, to your point, uh, the only player in NBA history to average at least 30 points and t 20 rebounds per game in a season, something he did seven times in his career. That's amazing. You take him, right, on your yeah. squad? I'll probably get about 10 minutes. Yeah, of there you go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, let's go to our, uh, our questions from the crowd right now. Chuck Walsh in the crowd, uh, assistant <laughs> athletic director of media relations for men's basketball. Chuck, what do we got? Questions from the crowd tonight. Let's take it away. Go ahead. Hey, Coach. Uh, Gabe from Tallahassee. Thanks so much for doing this again this year. I know it's a big time commitment for you. Um, you – Built such a great program, and I think success uh, speaks for itself with the longtime continuity that you've had on your coaching staff. My question is, um, we finally had an opening with having Coach Young leave and Coach R.J. Barsh, I think is his name. Yes. What attracted you to him? Like, what do you look for, for when you do have an opening and uh, bringing somebody on board like that? Well, we've known – I've known R.J. for – RJ for a number of years. He was the head coach at uh, Southeastern in, uh, in in Florida uh, for like seven years. He took a team that was non-existent and played in the, the championship games. Went to the Final Fours several, a couple, couple of times. Won the conference championship. And he's a great fundamentalist, high character individual. Uh, has a nationwide grasp on recruiting. Um, and I've watched him grow. I've watched him. I've been around him, and he just was the ideal person, you know, to to replace uh, C.Y. who had done just an outstanding job for us. And um, great Christian gentleman. People don't know this, but he has he's a, a has has been a, a, a lay minister as well as a, a basketball coach. And uh, people tried to even get him into politics. Uh, he's one of those unique, special guys. He has that it factor that I think he's going to make a major contribution uh, to, our, to our program. Very good. Thank you, Gabe. Appreciate that question. Gabe in Tallahassee, a round of applause. Question from the crowd tonight. Thank you there, Chuck. 
Uh, first year on the staff, R.J. Barsh, as you mentioned, uh, someone you, you bring in. And Stan Jones been a guy that's been with you uh, over uh, the length of your careers as a head coach, uh, right there by your side. Steve Smith, now year four uh, on your staff here at Florida State. And he was recognized, Coach, uh, for his service in the U.S. Army. Uh, with it uh, being uh, a military appreciation day, hoops for heroes on Saturday. I believe I have three head coaches as, as my uh, as my assistants. Yeah, these guys are more than capable. They have such great relationships with our players, and, and that's the key. You know, being able to communicate with youngsters and, and, and help them grow and develop into young men. Uh, that's not always what you see is 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 going on on the court. The time they spend with them in the office. Uh, in the apartments where they live and just uh, on casual um, meetings here and there. Those guys just do such a wonderful job with uh, not allowing anything to fester and, uh, and, and become a problem. Sometimes you forget that uh, these guys are, are, are coming to us as teenagers, yeah. and they do teenager things. Now, I know you didn't. You look like you was an angelic, well. nice Choir boy. Well, that's another up. show for another platform, I think, Coach. You we'll live right by the foot of the cross. That's you? exactly right. Yeah, yes, uh-huh. you're good. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, most kids don't do that, okay? <laughs> you're just a good little boy. Okay? That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, anyway, but, but it, 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 you, you are developing youngsters in more ways than just basketball mm-hmm. players, and our guys just do a great job. Uh, the kids are always in the office talking to them about things, about life and things in general, so – I'm, I'm very happy with the staff we have. Yeah, absolutely. Great question again from Gabe in Tallahassee here on site at Glory Days uh, Grill. Coming up next, Jalen Worley will stop by, ladies and gentlemen. And we've got a, uh, a fun night uh, with Jalen. Also, some great folks here from Florida State Athletics. We've got some autographs available for all of you here following the show, courtesy of uh, our partners at Rising Spear as well. Jalen Worley coming up next live from Glory Days as Florida Farm Bureau Insurance wants to give you a a VIP game day experience this basketball season. They also want you to uh, check out the uh, the opportunity as Farm Bureau members to uh, get in and uh, have the uh, chance to go out and grab some tickets as well. And so uh, make sure that you uh, have the opportunity to do that with Florida Farm Bureau uh, Insurance. Go to the website ffbisweeps.com to check it out. Seminoles.com slash ffbisweeps. It's brought to you by Florida Farm Bureau Insurance, proud sponsor of Seminole Athletics. We'll take a break. Jalen Worley joins us here on the other side, live from Glory Days, as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, welcome back live from Glory Days here in Tallahassee. It is Inside Seminole Basketball with the head coach, Leonard Hamilton, giving coach a little bit of a breather. As you notice to my right, you see him, Florida State point guard Jalen Worley. We're going to talk to him coming up here in these next two segments. And uh, stay with us afterwards, folks, here at uh, Glory Days uh, following the show. It's a complimentary meet and greet uh, to follow with Jalen also, a special guest, Morgan Chacon from Florida State Beach Volleyball and Cameron Easterling as well from the uh, Florida State uh, Cheer Squad and Dance Squad here at Florida State University. So they'll be with us following the show tonight. They're here right now. And a complimentary meet and greet following the program, courtesy of the, uh, the folks and the great team at Rising Spear. Jalen, good to have you. Great to see you. How are you doing tonight? Everything good? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Thanks so much. We, uh, we appreciate that. You get ready for a couple of games on the road this week. What's that, uh, that mindset, that mentality like now, getting away from home and kind of locking it in with your teammates here over the, uh, the next four or five, six days, playing away from home for two games? Yeah, it's exciting um, playing at uh, NC State, especially with the uh, last couple games. Um, we were able to win on the road at Notre Dame. Uh, in Pittsburgh, so we know it's a little bit more challenging than when we're playing at the Tuck, so uh, we see it as an opportunity uh, to get two big road wins uh, this upcoming week. Yeah, biggest difference for you, playing playing away from home. Uh, obviously, you're at home, you got the, the crowd, the momentum, but for you as a player individually, um, how do you kind of uh, compartmentalize all that and lock it into uh, the game plan and what you need to do out there? 
Yeah, I think uh, probably the biggest thing would just be playing on unfamiliar rims um, just because we practice uh, every day at BTC and at the Tuck. Um, and we have a really good um, support of fans. So the noise at away games is kind of similar to what it mm -hmm. is at the Tuck because um, we have great uh, support. So I really just say practicing and shooting on um, a different court that you're not accustomed to day in and day out. Yeah, absolutely. Our player spotlight with Jalen Worley presented by Rising Spear, proud partner of FSU Athletics, leading the way with Florida State's NIL needs, serving over 200 seminal student-athletes. And as we mentioned, following tonight's show, stop by the Legends Room here at Glory Days uh, to meet our FSU stars and have a chance to win men's and women's basketball tickets, courtesy of Rising Spear. All right, as a guy that runs the show, has the ball in his hands, and you're one of the best in the league when it comes to assist-to-turnover ratio, um, what's that responsibility like? getting everybody into uh, the offense, where they need to be, and making sure things get moving uh, at the start of the possession uh, when you have the ball in your hands. Yeah, um, I really enjoy doing it, uh, being a point guard, especially with uh, so many talented teammates um, that I have on my team. Um, it's kind of just uh, taking pride in what I've had to learn to grow from being a freshman to uh, being a sophomore is using your voice as a leader, making sure that everyone understands um, whatever play we're running and whatever actions we're getting into just – uh, being a leader um, with my voice and using pointing and um, making sure that everyone's on the same page. Yeah, uh, and uh, the way you handle the basketball coming into uh, the last uh, handful of games, a 3.5, 3.5 to 1 assist to turnover ratio and one or fewer turnovers in 9 of 11 ACC games this season. That's got to be a point of pride for you, being able to uh, uh, to handle it and distribute it the way you do and getting your uh, your teammates uh, great shots and great looks when they're out there on the floor. Yeah, it is. It is something I uh, pride myself in and I enjoy doing, uh, especially because um, we can get somebody an uh, easy shot. It usually uh, creates synergy within your team um, and just uh, knowing how hard we work day in and day out, uh, seeing um, – all my teammates being able to flourish, it, it is a point of pride for me. Yeah, absolutely. Jalen Worley with us here at our main table, going to be with us for one more segment. So sit tight. Don't go anywhere. Okay? I got you. He's with us. Jalen Worley, ladies and gentlemen, starting point guard for this Florida State basketball team. Hey, Florida Farm Bureau members get free tickets to select FSU men's basketball games. Just visit myffbf.org to sign into your account. Then follow the prompts for attractions and sports and sporting events to get your two free tickets. Tickets offered on a first-come, first-served basis and are subject to availability. Not a Farm Bureau member. Visit myffbf.org and register to become a member today. Farm Bureau Insurance, proud to support Seminole Athletics. One more segment to come with Florida State point guard Jalen Worley when we come back live from Glory Days in Tallahassee as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Glory days in Tallahassee. Welcome back in inside Seminole basketball. Jalen Worley uh, to my right. He, he's got a smile because his Philadelphia Eagles are going to the Super Bowl. Was that how big of a deal was that for you yesterday as a uh, as a Philly guy? Huh? Was that pretty cool? It is a big deal, uh, especially because I know um, how much our city is so supportive of the Eagles. I mean, a lot of people um, are. Um, Eagles fans, so I just know a lot of my family members were really excited yesterday back home. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty impressive stuff. And another uh, Super Bowl appearance for your Philadelphia Eagles, and uh, that'll be a couple of weeks down in Glendale, uh, Arizona. And, uh, you know, this is uh, a, a, a city, as you mentioned, that's got a lot of history. We were talking about this with Coach earlier. Chuck had it uh, in his, uh, his trivia. Your family and your father, his godfather, is Will Chamberlain. Yep. that's that's amazing stuff. Kind of kind of walk us through your your family connection. Obviously, your grandfather uh, spent time in the city of Philadelphia. Was drafted at, by the Syracuse Nationals after his college days were over. Uh, talk about that connection and what that means to you uh, overall. Yeah, my family has uh, a lot of basketball roots um, yeah. in them, and just I'm um, hearing the stories that my dad was able to tell me because I wasn't able to uh, meet Will Chamberlain or yeah. my grandfather, so I kind of just had to hear about it, um, and it just. It drives me every day uh, just to understand uh, kind of where I'm trying to get to, but understanding where I came from and the people that came before me to allow me to get the opportunities that I'm getting uh, just motivates me every day to go a little bit harder and just to make them proud. Your dad played at St. Joe's, uh, right? Yep. You mentioned basketball roots. What, 
What's that, that competitiveness like and, and learning from someone that played the game at a level like uh, your, your father did? Um, it was a lot. It was a difficult dynamic growing up because a lot of times uh, he was my dad, but he was also my coach. So, sure. you know, I had to uh, figure out how to, how to do that and manage that relationship. Um, but I, I'm very grateful for him um, as he, he never pushed me in the direction of basketball, believe it or not. He always just allowed me to kind of gravitate towards it naturally. Yeah. So um, I'm really grateful for uh, the role he played in um, helping pave the way for me to get to where I am today. Yep. Uh, let's talk about this group and this basketball team as you guys have grown here uh, throughout the, uh, the season and you've continued to develop your game on the offensive end of the floor and shooting it better from three and from the free throw line as well. And when, when you're making shots and you have a, a great addition like Darren Green, who's such a, a great shooter, uh, Matthew's improving his shooting, everybody's picking it up a little bit. How does that open things up offensively across the board when, when guys are getting into it, getting in the gym and getting shots up uh, throughout the year? Yeah, I mean, I think everybody on the team is just trying to uh, grow their skill set. So, like, whatever, um, they're really strong and just being able to keep getting stronger in other areas. Um, and I think as the season has gone on, you've kind of seen the work that we've been uh, putting in behind the scenes um, and how it's kind of just been uh, – we've been able to, to recognize the work that we're doing and try to uh, help each other get good opportunities and good shots yeah. because we know that we're in the gym together working on uh, certain moves and certain uh, shots from different spots. So just being able to see our, our, group, our, our group grow mm -hmm. um, has been really special. Well, I'll tell you what, it's been fun watching you play and continue to improve and get the job done. Look forward to seeing you Wednesday night at NC State. Jalen, thanks so much for the time. Appreciate yes, you. Thank there you, you go. Me. They call it Big Guard U. He's one of them, ladies and gentlemen. Jalen Worley, kind enough to give us some time here on the, uh, the program live from Glory Days in Tallahassee. As our show is brought to you in part by Truist, a proud partner of Seminole Athletics and the official retail bank of the Florida State Seminoles. Care, it's a total bank changer. See how at truest.com. Coach Hamilton joins us for our final segment when we return on the other side as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. All right, back one final time, live from Glory Days here in Tallahassee, and make sure to uh, stick around. Jalen, Morgan, Cameron, all meeting and greeting, complimentary, signing autographs after the show tonight here at Glory Days. It'll be the 62nd meeting all time with Florida State and NC State as the Knowles have won five in a row versus the Wolfpack and eight uh, of the last nine meetings overall. Time now for our keys to success brought to you by Scott and Wallace, the official law firm of the Florida State Seminoles, 222-7777 with offices in Tallahassee. All right, Coach, well, it's, it's all on you now. <laughs> the keys to success here this week uh, for two road games. What do you think? Well, one thing I've noticed that we've had several winning streaks against some opponents. That's right. And they're kind of catching up with us <laughs> right now. You know? They seem to have a different attitude. Sure. Uh, almost angry attitude. <laughs> trying to get that monkey off their back. So we, we got to get back on the winning yeah. ways and let them know that more of that is still on the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But a testament to your group, obviously. When the Garden and Gold come to town and the way you guys uh, continue to uh, grow and play, uh, you're getting everybody's best shot, uh, no matter, no matter the, uh, the group or the experience. We're standing on some broad shoulders of guys who have come to our program and really worked hard. And they've all graduated and they've realized that their, their, their dreams and uh, their opportunities. We have so many guys playing overseas mm -hmm. uh, that sometimes you, you, you can't keep up with all of them. And, so, so that, and more than anything else, our guys have graduated. Now, as, it, as that relates to our preparation this week, this is an important game for us because on the road against a team that's playing very well, playing about the best they've played in the last couple of years. And uh, they have a high-octane offense. they got a, a special guy playing in the middle uh, yeah. That's unique, and uh, most guys uh, uh, of his size are not great ball handlers and passers and decision makers. This guy has that package; mm -hmm. it gives them a unique type of skill, Mr. Burns. And so we got our hands full, but I think we're capable. I know we are. We're playing better, and uh, going on the road and winning victories is always important. Yep. Uh, talk with Jalen here just uh, moments ago. One of our last road games. He was big for you. Career-high 17 points, hit some huge free throws down the stretch 
at Notre Dame? What's his presence in the emergence meant to your group overall? We, we try to get him to be a little more aggressive offensively because he has a knack for getting below the free throw line and with his size and length and if, if finishing plays in there. But he's the pass first guy right now. He enjoys getting his teammates into getting our team in a, a system in the rhythm. So I'm going to go with that. Yeah. Uh, until he decides that he's going to be give us more 17-point games. There we go. Yeah. Coach, always great. Thanks so much for your time, and uh, let's have a great week. Best of luck on Wednesday night. Thank you very much. There you go. Leonard Hamilton, ladies and gentlemen. Big round of applause for the head man of Florida State basketball, and that's going to do it for us live from Glory Days. Big thanks to Jalen Worley. Thanks to the folks at ABC 27 and everybody here at, uh, at Glory Days and the Seminole Sports Network as well. For Chris Culp, Brendan Erlinson in the studio, my name is Jeff Culhane. Have a great night, everybody, and go 